Letitia James, who got the $450 million judgment against him and keeps tweeting out the running total of what he owes with interest. She's loving her moment in the spotlight, uh, has learned the hard way that the working class, especially in New York, do not approve of her or what she's doing. Take a look at what happened to her when she addressed the FDNY. This is via Fox News. Watch. Come on, we're in a house of God. <laughs> First, um, simmer down. I want to thank Commissioner Kavanaugh and Chief Hodgins for that recognition. Wow, Sarah, look at that. FDNY, thumbs down. I'm sure they didn't respond nicely to being told to simmer down, which is annoying. They don't like her and they don't like what she's doing. They get it. Yeah, I think that we're seeing uh, many Americans just like FDNY right there just kind of galvanize around Donald Trump because they see what is so clear uh, that that this is the, as much as the left likes to talk about, you know, we, oh, democracy is at stake and this is, a everything is a threat to democracy and we love democracy. They are very clearly engaging in, you know, uh, disturbing a political election, uh, election interference, as much as they talk about, we don't like election interference. Uh, that's what they're doing by the persecution of Donald Trump. And I, uh, even the independents, and I would say the, the moderate Democrats that still exist, they see this for what it is. They see right through it. They know that Donald Trump is not guilty of all of these things. They know that E. Jean Carroll is a psychopath. They know all these things. They can see it. And I think that every American should be sitting there wondering to themselves, again, Donald Trump has said it. If they can do it to him, they will do it to you. Ask the J6ers who are still rotting in, in federal prison for parading around and being led on a guided tour by Capitol Police. I mean, we are seeing serious ramifications of the weaponization of the judicial system against uh, half of America, seemingly. And mm -hmm. I just think that there are so many more Americans that are awake because the left overplayed their hand on this, as they do so often, as Megan and Josh, I know you guys know, they overplayed their hand on this. They took it too far, and America sees what they're doing. They're, you know— there's no question that people get that Trump has been kicked around more so than any other, even strong Republican politician. That I mean, what they're doing to him, you have a whole podcast about it, Josh, to him is extraordinary. And that's what made it particularly interesting to me that this clip that was going around X the other day that I retweeted to, um, it's uh, from the History in Memes X account. And it's a 34-year-old Donald Trump uh, just a real estate mogul at the time. And he's asked by a reporter, it's classic stuff. It's like the old school television and the way this woman asked the questions are interesting. Anyway, uh, it's a longer clip, but take a look at 34-year-old Donald Trump being asked about why he wasn't gonna run for president. For some people, the ultimate goal in life uh, has been becoming the president of the United States. Would you like to be the president of the United States? I really don't believe I would, Rona, but I would like to see somebody as the president who could do the job, and there are very capable people in this country. Most people who are capable are not running for office. It, most men are frightened of politics today. It is a shame, isn't it? Yes. It is a shame. The most capable people are not necessarily running for political office, and that is a very sad commentary on the country. They had major corporations and they had this and that, but they are not running for political office. Why wouldn't someone like yourself run for political office? You have all the money that you possibly need. You've accomplished a great deal, even though you are only 34. I know there's a lot of things that you possibly can do in the years ahead. Why wouldn't you dedicate yourself to public service? Because I think it's a very mean life. I, I would love and I would, I would dedicate my life to this country, but I see it as being a mean life. And I also see it as somebody with strong views and somebody with the kind of views that are maybe a little bit unpopular, which may be right, but may be unpopular, wouldn't necessarily have a chance of getting elected against somebody with no great brain but a big smile. And that's a sad commentary for the political process. There is something so riveting about that clip. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's him. He looks just like Eric Trump there. He's only 34. It was 1981 on the Rona Barrett show. And... Um, Boy, if he only knew how right he was, Josh. 
You know, it's funny. So uh, I don't know if you guys remember the old Comedy Central roasts, but my wife and I recently rewatched all of them because there's some really good material in there. And Donald Trump was roasted on the Comedy Central roast in 2011. And he actually ends the night. So they roast him and at the very end. He kind of gets back at the roasters and he kind of signs off the stage by saying, you're going to love me when I'm president of the United States. So he kind of called it as recently as 2011. I'm not entirely sure what changed? I mean, I guess he ran for president briefly back in the 1990s or he explored it back on the old reform party, the old Ross Perot ticket. So, look, Donald Trump has always had very strong political feelings. He's always had very heterodox views. By the way, the one view that as far back as that clip, even probably further back to the 1970s, the one thing where Donald Trump was always a traitor to his upper class friends on was China and trade. He was always much, much more hawkish on U.S.-China relations, much more anti-free trade absolutism, much more pro-protectionist, much more pro-U.S. manufacturing. Go back to look at what he was saying in interviews right around the time that he was giving this clip. And he was proved totally right on that. He was proved remarkably prescient on that. I would argue both economically and politically. But yeah, I saw that clip the other day when it was circulating on social media as well. And it's just it's remarkable as well how little his voice has changed. I mean, if you close your mm-hmm. eyes there, I mean, he, he basically basically sounds the exact same way. He looks just like Eric Trump, as you said there. Doesn't Look, he? the guy's been around for a long time. He's been around in the public square for a long time now, Megan. That's yeah, pretty cool. I mean, I, I I enjoy seeing it. You know, I I would like to see a. Um, no, I wouldn't. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. <laughs> never mind. I'll move on. Um, I'd like to see a clip of everybody who's running for office when they're super young, so I can compare and contrast. But I think Trump's holding it together, okay. Um, I want to switch over to Fannie Willis because there's developments in that legal case today. (sighs) Interestingly, and I don't think this is a positive development, Judge McAfee, the judge who's deciding whether to disqualify Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade, just got a challenger. He was running. He'd been appointed to the spot because there was a vacancy. And now he has to run to, you know, you could call it re-election, but really he's technically not been elected. Uh, And he was running unopposed up until yesterday. And now- a Democrat uh, has decided he's going to run against him named Robert Patillo, who's a civil rights attorney, criminal de- defense attorney, talk radio host, former executive director of the Rainbow Push Coalition, which is a social justice and civil rights group founded by the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who seems to really, really, really hate Trump. I'll just give you a couple. Yet Checking his social media, there's one post showing Trump and his post reads, this man has brain damage. Um, he's got, oh gosh, a bunch of them. He's celebrating the amount that he owes in that Letitia James civil litigation against his corporation. Uh, he is mocking the Trump sneakers, calling them air treasons. Um, whatever. He's, the point is, there's nothing nice about Donald Trump on here. He can't stand him. And again, this is a jurisdiction That went 72 plus, almost 73% for Joe Biden in the presidential election, Sarah. And there's a real question about whether this is going to up the ante for this judge so much that he's now essentially choosing between keeping his job and doing what's right, which is, if you ask most independent experts and not people who are thumb on the scale for Fannie, to DQ this woman and her lover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing that strikes me um, in this particular Fannie Willis situation is just how arrogant these people on the left have gotten in. I mean, she wasn't careful. She and Nathan Wade weren't, they weren't careful. It seems to be that everyone in town knew exactly what was going on. And, but that seems to be par for the course when it comes to the left. I mean, you have, you know, Hillary Clinton, like taking a a baseball bat to their, you know, computers to hide their tracks. You have, you know, Bill Clinton saying, I did not have sexual relations with this woman. I mean, you, they're, they're so arrogant because they know at the end of the day. How about Menendez with his alleged corruption? And he's still there and Democrats won't do anything about it. And so, you know, I mean, we're seeing this two-tier justice system, but really at the end of the day, I mean, they are arrogant because they know that they can get away with it. They've been getting away with it for so long. And so, I mean, I'm with you, Megan. I'm very cynical about this particular situation. I don't think that justice will be done in this situation because, I mean, when has it ever been done when you're on the left? Seemingly, you can get away with murder if you have a D after your name and you are a radical activist. And yet, you know, again, I go back to Donald Trump and the people who are, you know, who who were at the Capitol on January 6th, 
particularly my friend, investigative reporter Steve Baker, who is now being right. charged with misdemeanor, and he's being perp walked. And so, I mean, it is really scary words. when we are living in a time, yeah, with with exactly with this two tier justice system where we seem to just be selectively prosecuting people for their political opinions. Meanwhile, you've got people like Fannie Willis who are over there. I mean, I mean participating in high levels of corrupt uh, corruption. You've got you know this money laundering situation with her uh, with her boyfriend. And to think that we will have a judge that will rule based off of politics and not the actual law is really scary. I hope I'm wrong. I, I think our viewers agree with you, Sarah, because I, I read enough of the comments to know that they do not believe this judge is going to have the fortitude to disqualify Fannie Willis, which would be a big move, but totally justified here. It, it's literally, I think, the only possible just result, given what we've seen. Grand Canyon University, a private Christian university in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, believes that equal opportunity is important and that the American dream starts with purpose. Change the world for good by putting others before yourself. Whether your pursuit involves a bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree, GCU's online on-campus and hybrid learning environments are designed to help you achieve your unique academic, personal, and professional goals. With over 330 academic programs as of September, GCU meets you where you are and provides a path to help you fulfill your dreams. The pursuit to serve others is yours. Let it flourish. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.